Hey nerds, what's up? Today I'll be reviewing, and sort of ranting, about the book The Future of Another Timeline by Annalee Newitz. See you after the jump. So I bought this book uh, late last year in 2019, the year it came out, and it was actually the first book I read this year. And I was really excited to read it because I loved the premise and it had been up for a few awards and um, I really loved the title and the book again. I'm really a sucker for a good cover. And so I was really excited to read this book and it was the first book out of the gate in January that I read. Um, but ultimately I was just really disappointed by it. Um, it just didn't deliver for me. And so today I'm gonna to talk about the four reasons why I didn't really like it. But first I wanna read the flap so you know a little bit what it's about. If you can rewrite the past, you can control the future. 1992. After a confrontation at a Riot Girl concert, 17-year-old Beth finds herself in a car with her friend's abusive boyfriend dead in the back seat, agreeing to help her friends hide the body. This murder sets Beth and her friends on a path of escalating violence and vengeance, as they realize many other young women in the world need protecting too. 2022. Determined to use time travel to create a safer future, Tess has dedicated her life to visiting key moments in history and fighting for change. But rewriting the timeline isn't as simple as editing one person or event. And just when Tess believes she's found a way to make an edit that actually sticks, she encounters a group of dangerous travelers bent on stopping her at any cost. Tess's and Beth's lives intertwine as war breaks out across the timeline, a war that threatens to destroy time travel and leave only a small group of elites with the power to shape the past, present, and future. Against the vast and intricate forces of history and humanity, is it possible for a single person's actions to echo through the timeline? Uh, I get sad whenever I read that because doesn't that premise sound awesome? I'm so interested in fantasy and science fiction with a political message. I think it's just a great way to get messages across and I've read a lot of successful ones, but this one just didn't quite cut it for me. Um, so starting with number one, the first thing that I noticed about this book is that there was no nuance. Um, when we think of the great kind of dystopian political novels of the past, we think of, you know, 1984, um, The Handmaid's Tale, Brave New World, Slaughterhouse-Five. And I think what makes those books stand out today and are so a part of our culture is that they were actually very subtle. They had a lot of nuance. When you read those books, those books don't tell you how to think. They present this political statement or idea, but it's really up to the reader to parse and discover what we should take away from it. And it's something I've noticed increasingly in media and books and film and cinema today is that directors and authors no longer trust viewers to make informed decisions. They feel like they just have to hit you over the head with their meaning. And this book was about as subtle as a sledgehammer, in my opinion. I think it's very funny that on the front it says it's smart and nuanced. It's not nuanced. Uh, the author tells you exactly what to think at all times. Um, there's really just no discovery and that really frustrated me. Uh, and I'm gonna actually read a passage as an example. Um, it says, Anita and I spent the rest of the evening catching up on news about the latest horrible memes on Instagram. It turned out some billionaire had paid hundreds of operatives to run a conspiracy campaign proving that women who'd had abortions were now giving birth to fish because they ruined the bodies God gave them. Gory, doctored pictures of naked women surrounded by dead fish were spreading fast. I literally laughed when I read that. Um, it's just so silly. Like, I get that probably the point was to show that in 2022 people will believe anything, but it was just so stupid. I think it would have been a such more successful moment if it was doctored photos that said something like, women who got get abortions get incarcerated 50% more likely for violent crimes or something. Like something that isn't just so stupid, like that would be scary because I would believe people would believe that. But this didn't give me those feelings. I just ended up rolling my eyes. It's like, she didn't want there to be any mistake, I think, that it wasn't true. But in doing that, she didn't trust her readers to understand that it wasn't true. I hope that makes sense. But yeah, I just got really frustrated. There's a lot of parts like that. 
Um, and that actually kind of leads into my second problem with the book, which is that all of the villains were just cartoonishly evil. Um, now, as a book that covers a lot of, um, you know, problems and prejudices against people of color and LGBTQ plus community, I understand that some of the villains are going to be obvious. And I think that's fine. In fact, the big villain Comstock, he really um, kind of exemplifies that. He's the, what you think of as like, the racist or the prejudiced evil. He's very obvious, he's very hateful. And the problem with that though, is that all of her antagonists were that same level of evil. Um, and because of that, it just, it didn't make the story flow as well. Like, I want there to be different levels of antagonists in this story. Not all of the antagonists are gonna come out and just be so obvious. In fact, that's kind of the point of society today. That's why we have microaggressions and smaller things that needle at people that aren't so on the surface. And I think there was a missed opportunity here. And I'm actually gonna read another passage if you guys don't mind to show you what I'm talking about. Um, this is when the characters are going to a group of women that they hope will help them, but they actually turn out to be pretty prejudiced. And I'm gonna read it. I'm Tess. So you're really not from Algeria? I'm from California. I suppose that's almost as savage, really. Tell Augusta about your idea for a woman's cultural tea. 15 minutes later, Augusta had two pages full of shorthand and Sarah was already planning how many kinds of biscuits they'd need. None of the other exhibits had done any cross-cultural events yet and they wanted the Women's Building to be the first. The Women's Building has a hard time selling tickets to our exhibits, but surely people would pay to watch a civilized meal with women in their bizarre costumes from all across the world. Sarah looked pensive. Plus, don't you think it would be the perfect opportunity to teach these wild women some manners? The more she talked, the more I felt like I had eaten a spoonful of salt. It sounded like she wanted to turn our tea into a freak show. I don't want to sell tickets, I said. I thought we'd have more of a private meal to get to know each other. Augusta looked up from her notes, perplexed. Whatever would we do at a private meal? A lot of these women on the midway can't even speak. They use grunts and hand gestures. She grimaced and mimed grabbing something. But wouldn't that be a fun show? Primitive, primitives with tea and biscuits? <sighs> it doesn't annoys me again when I read that because it's not like I don't think that's happened. I'm sure people are that overtly just racist and terrible, but the problem is all of her villains were like that. And I think that same scene would have been so much more interesting if it was more under the surface um, and more like, well, we're being nice. Like, no, we're not saying anything wrong. It would be so much more interesting. Whereas this was just like, so obvious, like so obvious. And it just, it didn't work for me. I just felt like I needed a little bit more variety. Number three. Uh, I felt like her representation in it was kind of like a checklist. Um, I think it's such a noble thing what New It's was trying to do, which was intersectional feminism. As a feminist book, she was really trying to make sure everyone was included. It wasn't just white feminism. So I appreciate that she was trying to include characters from so many different backgrounds, and she really does. She has a character from a lot of different LGBTQ plus representation and people of color. The problem was, especially with her LGBTQ plus representation, is that she kind of just stopped at the checklist. Like, okay, I have um, you know, a bisexual person, I have a transgender person in my novel, I have a lesbian in my novel, etc. But then didn't give them any other personality traits. So all of the people fell really flat. The problem is real people are more than just their one identity, you know? people part of the LGBTQ plus community also have a lot of different personality traits. Um, but all of the people in Daughters of Harriet, I honestly couldn't tell you the difference between those characters. They all seemed exactly the same other than their label. And that just isn't good writing. Uh, I wasn't interested in those characters because they just, they just didn't have anything more to them. And so even though I understand what she was trying to do, I just feel like it wasn't very successful because it was too, it was just too simple. Um, and then lastly, I felt that she took a big topic and boiled it down to one thing. Um, now, before I go on to that, I don't expect every book on feminism to have to hit every feminist issue. That's, that's not possible. It's not going to happen. But the problem is that Newitz started her book with a very broad lens. Um, and it made it seem like the book would cover a lot, like maybe violence towards women and um, transgender rights and um, you know a lot of other things like that. But in the end, it just boiled down to abortion. Like that was the only thing for the last half of the book that was talked about. And so it just had a hard time resonating with me um, because it started so big and then was just like, well, I guess abortion's the only issue that matters in the end. And so it just kind of fell flat. Um, 
for an example, there's a part of the book, and this isn't a big spoiler, um, where they are worried that they're, the big bad is trying to erase transgender women from history. And when they introduced that idea, I was very interested. I was like, oh, I wonder how that's gonna play out. Like, why are they doing that? What do they hope to gain? But then it's like explored for half a chapter and then just totally not explored ever again. And it's only explored in relation to one character. And so you're kind of like, well, you didn't really cover that. Like why introduce that if you're not gonna cover it at all? And so in the end, when it was only abortion, I was just kind of like, meh, this doesn't really, this just doesn't really do it for me. Um, so those are the four reasons I didn't really like this book. Um, I do want to end on a positive note because I didn't hate it. <laughs> I just, well, I hated a lot of it, but um, I will say usually when I hate a book this much, I don't want to read anything else from the author, but I actually do want to give this author a second chance for a few reasons. Um, one, I, I think her heart was in the right place in this book. I think she was really trying to do something and she just isn't there yet. And so I think maybe in a few more novels, I'd be willing to give it another chance because I think the ideas were there. They just weren't executed correctly. I also loved her idea of time travel um, based in geological science. It turns out that the author's a huge uh, geology nerd and so that's why she added that in. And I love those little details. I love when an author puts their passions into their books. So I thought that was really, really cool. Um, and her prose was fine. It wasn't like her prose was bad. It was just um, the ideas weren't fully there. Um, so that's my review for the future of another timeline. Honestly, I give it one out of five stars. I was not a fan. Okay, I gotta know, have you read this book? Did you like it? Did you like it more than me? Do you not agree? Please tell me in the comments below. I'm really interested to know. And I'm also interested to know if you like political fantasy or if you just avoid it altogether. Um, if you like this video, please make sure to like and subscribe and comment. I'd like to see you back. And if you'd like to see what I'm currently reading or just get more book reviews, you can check me out on Instagram at bookborn.reviews. See you next time. Bye.